Yeah, I'm going to present uh, a bit about analytics and uh, how to measure communications, digital communications. Um, I mean, I'm not the biggest uh, expert probably in the field. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the biggest expert in the field, uh, but I've, I've um, accepted the invitation by Shenia because I thought, okay, it's just a matter of, of sharing what I know and what we, what we uh, implement at SIB and see if, um, if we can discuss that and, and probably improve our, our practices as well. Um, so, of course, data is power and we in bioinformatics won't say the contrary. Um, and analytics will help you make sense of data and put it to use for maximizing the return on investment um, of your brand strategies and technical, uh, technical campaigns. So, of course, it's easier said than done. Um, and uh, it's important to know how we gather the data, how we tell the, the how, how we got the stories it tells, um, and uh, how, how to change our decisions or, or, or refine our strategy with this. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try to share with you simple practices. Um, that proved useful to us at SIB, um, and just let uh, and just share a few examples of of, um, of what we've done. But first, I wanted to share some examples of large brands that use analytics in their campaigns. Um, so, for example, we we have um, Spotify that you all know. Um, Spotify used its vast trove of listener data. To, play, to, to a playful use um, in a global out-of-home ad campaign. So it was the largest out-of-home uh, effort to date. Um, and they highlighted um, some of the most bizarre user habits um, they noticed. So for example, this is, this is an ad which I found um, quite, quite funny. Um, you know, taking this example of, of a person that listened sorry 42 times uh, on Valentine's Day and, and wondering what did you do actually? So it's just an example of, of using analytics. Uh, another example is, um, is EasyJet. Uh, for their 20th anniversary, they, they use the personal stories uh, and individual metrics in their direct comms and proved very efficient. Um, so, um, for example, conversion rates uh, in Switzerland um, increased by nearly 30%. Uh, so it means people that have received this personalized uh, communication booked a, a flight within the, in the next 30 days. Um, so, yeah, found it also an, an inspiring example of what you can do with analytics. Um, and finally, of course, no marketing analytics can, can be complete without mentioning Netflix um, and how they use marketing analytics to keep their content engaging. Um, this is really at the heart of their business model. And this is how they, I mean, how they, they always push the, the, the very best content to their viewers. I mean, just by leveraging the data they, they've got. Um, yeah, so. There would be very, I mean, many other examples of brands using their analytics in, intelligently to, to improve their communication. Um, but let's look at how it works for us who are not in large inter international companies um, and don't work in this type of um, business model. Um, and first, why should you care about analytics? Um, I would say whatever your reason, I mean, it can be to quantify your, your, your impact, to identify uh, your strengths or weaknesses, to, to try new things, or just report on your work. Um, I think um, analytics are key. And the major advantage of digital communications is really that it's traceable. Um, so everything that you do on digital comms can be measured. Um, so that's very um, powerful. Um, but where should we beginning, begin uh, from? So I've, I've tried to, to make a bit of theory around that. 
um, and first um, establish your objectives. Um, so working in communication, I don't teach you anything about saying that when we establish our strategy, we need to address the, the following questions like, uh, what should I do? Uh, why do I make this choice? How should I do it? Does it work? Um, and analytics will help you answer these questions. So um, first you need to set your objectives and, and keep these objectives in mind uh, for the rest of your analytics journey. Um, because it's not the same to choose and analyze metrics if your objective is to grow your audience, um, you know, or to generate um, collaborations with uh, the industry, for example, or to ensure participation um, to, to a training course. Um, then you need um, for each objective you set to select the tools and media which will help you reach that objective. Um, so if I take my previous objective of, of developing your image and reputation and get your target audience to recognize your impact, then you might focus specifically um, on, your, on your website and organize your digital actions to channel your visitors to some dedicated pages on your website, um, as for example, news or success stories page, um, your activity report or some kind of fact sheet uh, promoting your, your recognized impact. Um, and if you want to generate new collaborations with the industry, you can decide to focus on a LinkedIn campaign um, with some examples of collaborations, promotion of dedicated events, and set up a dedicated newsletter. Um, and sometimes you will select the same channel for different objectives and you will differentiate your actions with specific content addressing one or another objective. Um, the third step is really to define your metrics. And that's where it becomes um, a lot more tricky, I would say, um, because how are you gonna measure your success? You need to determine which metrics will be the most relevant and accurate. Um, so being able to, to track your performance is obviously important to determine whether or not you have chosen the right tools and channels or the right content to, to reach your objectives. Um, so meaning defining your, your, your metrics means defining your key performance indicators. So let's go back to our objectives. Um, so we had to increase our scientific reputation. So in that case, um, probably you're going to look at the dedicated page views, um, the time spent on, on, on that content, specific content, the channels, I mean, where do the visitors come from, um, number of new visitors, which page, uh, pages they've visited, number of followers on, this, on the social media. I mean, there are tons of, of metrics that you could follow, but you have to choose the ones that are most um, relevant. To, to, to your action. And if I take my, my second objective of generating collaborations uh, through LinkedIn and, and newsletter, um, then you probably want to look at the evolution of the number of followers, um, number of impressions, engagement rate on your posts, uh, which are the most efficient ones, um, the landing page visits, number of page views, opening and click on newsletters, um, you have different possibilities again. Of course, once you've defined your metrics, then you're going to analyze them um, and follow them over time and try to understand what worked well and what can be improved. Um, and I would say also that you need to give yourself some time um, because success is not immediate always. So you, you need to, to give your, your, your action enough time um, before you analyze the, the results. And finally, you refine your strategy. I mean, either you found that your actions were very successful and you're going to um, reinforce uh, your actions, um, or you have to, to change something and, and the analysis will help you understand if the content was not appropriate, the tool was not appropriate, the timing. I mean, there are many different aspects that you could refine. 
And the last point is finally to use the, analy the an analytics to promote your success um, or failure, but I mean, to promote your action at least. And um, it's about know how and make it known. Um, I mean, analytics are a very simple and, and nice way to present your work. Okay, so once we've, we've understood this journey, I would say that now it's time for, for picking the right metrics. And this is really challenging because you can easily misinterpret data. There are so many. Uh, and it's important to think in terms of visitors journey for, for, for a website, um, for example, and compare your metrics and analyze them as much as possible using at least two dimensions. Because for example, if um, you take the number of page views, um, it's not gonna tell you if your content was interesting or read. Uh, if you look at the time spent on these pages, you will, uh, this will give you um, the additional information um, that helps you assess the visibility or relevancy of, of your content. And same goes uh, with the unique visitors against number of sessions. Both are interesting, but looking at only one is misleading. Um, so we're doing that, for example, for the website, um, the institutional website, the sip.swiss, um, for also some other websites like the, the conference one, bc2.ch. Um, um, it's very interesting to compare as well the, the scientific versus institutional news. I mean, we thought that given our audience, scientific news would probably get better, um, better uh, metrics than, uh, than, than um, institutional ones. And we found out that in many cases, it was the contrary that happened. So actually our audience is interested to know what happens at SIB, what is SIB? I mean, all dimensions of the institution. So. It, it was something interesting to look at. Uh, and and this, is, this is done by looking into the content. So not just the figures, but also analyzing why did we get better, um, better outcome with this one rather than this one? What are the top three news or what are the top three posts and the, 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 the worst ranked uh, ones? Um, another point that I wanted to, um, to highlight is to be careful with the bounce rate um, because we always get the bounce rate on, on Google Ana uh, Analytics and it's very difficult to, um, to interpret. Bounce rate is us usually given for the whole website um, and it's probably misleading. Um, you should look at the bounce rate for individual pages. Um, you should um, come back to your objective as well. If the objective of a certain page is uh, for people to click on, um, on a newsletter or to subscribe for, for an event or things like this, a high bounce rate is probably good because it's a single action uh, on a page. So really, you know, be careful about what it means. Um, and engage with really the content of the pages you're looking at because figures for the whole website won't give you much. Um, for newsletters, um, some basic metrics would be uh, the number of recipients uh, versus the number of readers. It means versus the number of opening, I mean, the opening rate uh, of, of the newsletter. Um, of course, you have to take into account also the number of newsletters that you're sending um, the click rates, um, the time spent. So if you just look at the click rates, okay, it's gonna give you an interesting figure. But if you don't compare it to the time spent on the pages where the news is, I mean, people may have clicked and, 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 and exit directly the web page. So it's important to look at the two figures. Um, also, you can check at the percentage of scroll down um, this is possible only if the newsletter is opened in the browser. So, yeah. 
Um, and finally, with social media, um, of course, you're going to look at the evolution of the number of followers or the number of posts that you've uh, you've you've pushed on on, on the uh, the social media. Um, you need also to, to check the impressions versus engagement um, because usually the number of impression is huge but then when you look at the the actual number of clicks um, or the the number of really engagement of your community is probably um, a bit more interesting um, and again, it depends on your objectives. I mean, if your objective is really um, to grow your uh, the, the brand awareness, then impressions um, are important. If you want to increase your credibility, scientific credibility, for example, you want people to, to engage. You want people to go and click and see what's the content behind. Um, so again, it depends on, on your objectives. Um, yeah, so that's it. And, and of course, what I wanted to say before about social media is that you have to choose your social media in terms of, of specific audience. Um, at SIB, for example, we've, we've um, differentiated between um, Twitter, which is dedicated to the scientific community. So scientific news would go on Twitter. Um, LinkedIn, which will be more for industry um, engagement, a more institutional news as well. Uh, YouTube is, uh, is also a, a strong uh, social network and um, Facebook, we are not very much active and, and we leave it for, for lay audience. Uh, and it's probably, um, it's only in French um, for the, the French speaking part of Switzerland. Okay, so what are the tools we work with? Um, first, of course, Google Ana Analytics. So I guess all of you have set up your Google Analytics on, on your website. If not, begin with this, I would say, uh, and explore the, the many possibilities you have um, to, to analyze your, your website. Um, you can check tutorials. Um, there are many, many are very well made. And of course, Google support is, um, is a good source of, um, of explanation. Um, some examples of uh, what you get with Google Ana Analytics is here. I mean, the audience um, se section is where you can find all figures related to users, new or returning, number of page per session and stuff. So then you can decide um, the, the period of time, of course, um, you can then cross with multiple um, dimensions. Um, so that's the, the most frequently used, I would say, section. You have the acquisition also, um, acquisition um, section, uh, which will tell you more about where the uh, visitors come from. Um, so this is where you can link it to your campaigns or what you're doing, also to SEO, I mean, the, uh, the search engine optimization, are you good on this, on this point? So that's the, um, the, uh, the natural referencing, so I don't know if you say so in English actually. <laughs> um, and um, the, the, last, um, the last part is the behavioral uh, flow. Um, that's where you can try to understand the journey inside your website. And of course, on your website, um, usually you have call to, uh, calls to action, sign up this newsletter, for example, or, or um, subscribe to, um, to um, that course. And uh, this is how you will see how um, visitors um, navigate in your website. Um, another tool that we're using is the um, Google, and I, I mean, the UTM uh, parameters. Um, so that's uh, something very useful to track your, your clicks. So UTM code is a simple code that you can add to the end of a URL um, to track the performance of a campaign or specific content. So we use these URLs in the button of our newsletters. 
uh, and social media campaigns so that we can see where the traffic on, on specific pages come from. So then in your Google Analytics dashboard, you will see, okay, these people come from this, um, this channel, from this campaign, because you can use five variants. Um, so you're gonna specify the source, uh, medium, campaign term and, and content. And with this, you can really identify uh, where the people are coming from. Because if you look, for example, if you have a, um, um, a scientific news that you, you want to promote, you've put it uh, in a newsletter and you've tweeted about it. If you have two different uh, UTM code, you will be able to, to track it and to know, okay, where are the, the visitors coming from? Uh, so this is very, very useful. Um, you have the, um, the link um, on, my, on my slide uh, to go to this campaign URL builder, and then you just have to, to use this, um, this URL in, in your code. Um, Google Tag Manager is, is quite complicated to use, but it's very powerful. Um, it can help you measure the scroll down, so the scroll depth and the events. So it's like um, if you have a newsletter only that you can open um, in the browser, so you have only a link in, in the email and people have to go to the browser to, to look at it, then you can put some pixels in the homepage, for example, and each time people will scroll down, um, they will launch this event. So the, the pixel is gonna be um, um, activated and then you, you can trace if people have scrolled down 25%, 50%, 75% or 100%, for example, of the newsletter. So it's quite, um, quite useful. You can also put that on links. Um, for example, if you want to know how many people have um, downloaded this particular PDF or, for, or form on your website, you can put again uh, an event uh, with Tag Manager and track that. Um, we use ASI mailing for measuring the opening rate of newsletters, but there are many other um, possibilities. This is one uh, among many others. Um, and uh, we use, of course, the analytics tools of each social media. Um, then, so, it's quite some work to, <laughs> to put that all together, uh, but it gives you the full view over your work on digital uh, media. So I've put you um, two, two links, which I found uh, interesting. So SEMrush is a company, but they have a blog, which is quite, quite useful uh, to look at. And of course the Google support is very well done. You have the explanation of, of each, um, each um, wording they use on Google Analytics, which are very specific and, and yeah, it can help you um, um, yeah, understand better uh, how Google is, uh, is using the terms. Um, what about Hootsuite and, and Sendable? You've probably heard about them. Um, we've tried Hootsuite, we're now trying Sendable. Um, they are useful because they gather all the analytics in one place and you can issue uh, reports from there. Um, they are also useful because you can plan your, your posts, but there are limits in the, in the planning and in the posting. Uh, for example, you cannot plan a thread uh, on Twitter um, with both of them. So. Yeah, there are limits, but now we're trying to, to use Sendable to gather all the, uh, the analytics in one place and, and, and um, be more efficient. Well, I can talk about that uh, in a few months <laughs> only. And just to finish with um, a few reports, um, you know, very shortly, just to let you know how we use these, um, um, these figures that, uh, that we get from, from all these, uh, these tools. Um, we issue some very detailed reports like this one about LinkedIn analytics. Um, so where we can, we can you know, see for each post uh, what, what is the engagement and how many impressions and stuff. And then we can analyze, okay, what kind of, of content works well and what doesn't work so well. 
um, we issue this kind of reports also about uh, newsletters. Um, then every found three times a, a year, we try to have a very short report um, this way, just for, for our colleagues, for, for SIB board of directors, I mean, for people to know what has been done, where do we stand, uh, what has worked. So very easy one. Um, and once per year. Um, attend, let me find my sorry back. <laughs> my my mouse back. Oh, voilà. uh, and uh, once per year we try to have uh, a more in detailed report. Um.